Ravenous toads that are capable of destroying a full-grown crocodile. Rabbit populations that eat themselves into complete starvation. These are not horror movie concepts. These are real stories. But the real question is, how could this exist in nature? Both of these are examples of invasive species. Invasive species are all these ones that are harmful, not because of what they are, but where they happen to be. It's okay, I love you, dear. These are my shoelaces. Invasive species can completely wreck an ecosystem, and we've tried all sorts of ways to get rid of them throughout the years, but a lot of these are backfired spectacularly. Take, for example, Australia's poster child for invasive species, the cane toad. Native to southern Central America, this large toad will eat just about anything, from small insects to the bowl of cat food that you left outside last night. They will also eat smaller frogs, snakes, snails, and small mammals, basically anything that will fit in its mouth. Saddest part about this story is that they were introduced to Australia on purpose. Farmers brought them in the 1930s to control the cane beetle eating sugarcane crops. But as we know, they didn't stay in the sugarcane fields and started spreading across the continent. In their native environment, the toads are eaten by local fish, birds, bugs and reptiles, among other predators. But in Australia, there are few predators that can eat them safely. Cane toads are poisonous and predators can often die from eating them. Another fun fact about cane toads is they excrete a poison from their shoulder. This poison can cause death or blindness in humans. They also breed immensely, being able to lay clutches of eggs up to 35,000 at a time. This can be done twice a year. This is a lot of baby toads to deal with. If you add all these factors together, you have an increasingly rampant population. This graph from the International Union of Conservation of Nature demonstrates the impact that cane toads have had on the Australian environment. This goes for all invasive species. Impacts of invasive species don't just affect the environment, it affects the livelihood of people as well, even to the point of breaking 10 of the 17 unsustained goals for the United Nations. Examples of this can be demonstrated by data collected by the World Health Organization. Some examples include the zero hunger and no pee goals. Introduced species such as the fall armyworm are decimating yields of maize across Africa and impacting small farmlands, and therefore food yield is in decline. Obviously, it's best to avoid introducing a species in the first place, but it is possible to eradicate them. This is depending on how dedicated a government or an entity is. Macquarie Island, halfway between Australia and Antarctica, gives indication of the difficulty eradicating introduced species, but also provide hope for sustainability. From the discovery of the island in 1810, it was a hub for seal and penguin hunting. It was a different time with very different ethics. There was an old tradition of bringing rabbits along voyages as food in case of shipwrecks and supply. This is how they were reduced to Macquarie Island. But as we know, rabbits reproduce very rapidly. By the 1970s, there were more than 100,000 rabbits that had decimated and eaten Macquarie Island's plant life. Conservationists were so concerned about the rabbit population that they introduced a disease to curb the population. This disease was called myxomatosis. It was fairly successful, reducing the rabbit population by 20,000 within a decade, but the rabbits still persisted. By 2000, the rabbit population was so out of control, the rabbits nearly stripped the island bare of plant life. To prevent any more damage, the Tasmanian government approved a $17 million program to hunt down and kill every rabbit left on the island. The first initiative in 2011 was a bait and poison method, which reduced the rabbit population immensely. To remove the remaining rabbits, trained canines were implemented. To prevent any more introduced species, these canines were removed when the operation was finished. In April of 2014, after two centuries of damage, the eradication was complete. This example of ingenuity and persistence gives hope of controlling invasive species problems across the world. But could the species with the most drastic environmental impact be a group of primates who emerged from Africa to cover most of the world?